Hi guys, this will be another episode in my Grandad's Junk Pile project, probably number three in the series. Got a request from Tessine Fatima to make a rubber band powered car that will throw a cube of foam when it reaches the five metre mark. Not sure if it's supposed to stop at five metres and then throw the cube of foam, or whether it's just supposed to do it as it passes the five metre mark. But I'll just do what I can. So from the junk pile, I've got this old rubber band powered car. It's uh, I usually refer to it as my rubber band powered car number one or number eight because they're both basically the same. It's plastic conduit, which is thin plastic tubing of an oval shape. And I used it on my first car because I had some. It's the sort of stuff that electricians use for putting wire in and burying it in the walls. You plaster over it. Anyway. If you want the build details for that, you'll have to go back to my number one or number eight. I'll put links in the video description. I'm going to use it because it's ready made. And what we need to do is fit something on there that will be some sort of um, catapult system that we trigger as it goes past the five metre mark. This is my first attempt, just using the existing holes that are in the chassis from other projects. A couple of bits of plastic again from another project. Some barbecue skewers and a rubber band. So if we bring that up a little bit it flicks forwards. Now that tells me that that's probably not a good way of arranging the catapult. It might be easier if I pivoted it about here somewhere and had the rubber band pulling underneath. So I'm going to drill some extra holes in it. I've rearranged things a bit as I suggested. I've now got the rubber band back at this end and the arm is pivoted. Moved on a little bit. Instead of a barbecue skewer going through here, I've got a bit of metal tubing, so it's a bit stiffer. I've got this lump of wood wired in place to take the force of the catapult and stop it at the right place. And I've temporarily just put a bottle cap type thing on there to hold the cube of foam. So we need to sort out some sort of trigger mechanism. Moving on. I've now got piece of wood here with a hole in it and a metal a piece of wire that goes through that hole with a bit of string on it or cotton on the back of here I've got a bent paper clip a loop that goes down there And that peg holds it in place. I don't know if we can see that there. So when we pull the cotton, it'll release the catapult. Probably couldn't see that, but that's it. Just pulls it straight out of that little hole. So that's our release mechanism. And the idea is that string 
or cotton will be tied to the back axle so that as the axle turns it will wind the string up and it will get to a point where it will just pull that out and release it and the trick will be getting the length of that cotton right so that it releases it at 5 metres. For the first test run we're going to run it over 3 metres because I've got red lines marked on my kitchen floor at 3 metres. The second mark is where those two white steps are. We'll try it and if it works I'll tell you what I've done at this end. So what should happen is the catapult should release more or less where those white steps are. A little bit early, in fact very early. To get this to work we have to put the peg in first at the 3 metre mark with the cotton already wound up and then as we go that way, backwards, we have to connect the rubber band, which is actually tied to the end of this piece of cotton, to the back axle and wind it up at the same time as unwinding that bit of cotton. Because as the car moves forwards it winds up this piece of cotton and at this point it should suddenly release. So I've pushed the car backwards unwinding the trigger cotton and winding up the rubber band cotton. So I now need to put the trigger back into that wooden cross member and hook the catapult underneath it. This is our trigger. That goes through there. This comes down. I have to get it in the right place. Right, so oh, and it's very light trigger. <laughs> might be an idea to do something to make it a little bit less light, <laughs> stiffen it up a bit. But there's our, if I hold it still, there's our loose piece of cotton, which we'll have hanging underneath. our cube of foam. Put the car all in the right place. It might even pay to put a little piece of lead or something on that cotton to make sure it hangs down out of the way. Here we go again. Oh, not, not bad at all. In fact, that was probably spot on the three metre mark. I'll just see if I can capture this in close up. So this is the plastic cap that holds the foam, the cube of foam. On the back we've got this bent paper clip. And that loop is held in place by that peg. I don't know if you can see the end of it sticking out there. And as the axle goes round, it winds up that piece of cotton and eventually pulls it out and releases the catapult. For the build of the rest of the car you'll have to look at the video 
description for the link to my rubber band powered car number one or rubber band powered car number eight because that's what the original chassis was. The catapult itself is just a couple of bits of plastic pivoted on this uh, metal tube. Rubber band attached there pulls it and that piece of wood there is to stop it in the vertical position so there's a chance of that being thrown forwards. I wasn't given any specification of how far it was supposed to go or what size it was supposed to be but I think I've shown enough there just to give you an idea of a possible way of achieving the project. I'm sure you could spend more time on it and polish off all the loose ends. <laughs> it's not terribly accurate, but it gives you an idea of what you can achieve.